About this time last week, I had a speaking engagement with the Corporate Communications Department of the Central Bank of Nigeria. And it was a pretty interesting speaking engagement. Um, I ended up having a lot of fun doing it. And I, I really felt like there was a connection between me and the participants. But the build up to that session that I had with these people was pretty nerve wracking for me. And I'll tell you why. Because I've always had speaking engagements. And I mean, for the past three years now, I've had speaking engagements on and off since I started putting out content. I've had a lot of people call on me to come and speak to them. So physical speaking engagements, corporate speaking engagements. Um, so I've always had those. But one thing I realized is that the audience, in terms of their social status, has with time gotten grander. And so when, when I was invited to talk to the Corporate Communications Department of um, the CBN, I felt pretty small. And I felt, what am I going to tell these people? What am I going to tell them? I, I, I really don't know much about banking, if at all. I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on that. As a matter of fact, when I showed the letter to my wife, and she saw the topic I was going to be discussing, said, Tola, what kind of big topic is this? Do, can you talk on this thing? Because it was so well, professionally put well together, um, and it sounds so highfalutin. It was, you know, and in the moment I saw it, I'm like, I don't know how to talk about stuff like this. And those were my first instincts. You know, just, Tola, I don't think you are knowledgeable enough to talk about this and you know i take some time to breathe and just look at it very carefully and to just dumb down the words and the wednesday before i was to go because the engagement was for thursday i i, I found myself pacing and just trying to put together um articulate what i was going to say and I tell myself, Tola, this is not you. It's not what you do. You are not the guy that goes over the nitty gritty of everything you have to say. You are the guy that talks in the moment. You jot down your point and then you go from there. That's how you flow. It shouldn't be any different because you're talking to people in CBN. You've done this before. You got this. And I tried to tell myself, so I, I kind of scotched up everything I I was trying to memorize and I went there and on going there on getting into that to the venue getting into that room and I looked at the people I realized that they were just regular people I realized that they were just regular people like me regular people like me. And when was my turn to talk to them? You know, I started talking, cracked a few jokes, and they laughed. And I thought, these people laugh just like me. And as I was about to start, I felt their attention. And I could see the eyes looking at me, and I realized these people are just regular people looking for direction too. They are looking for someone to teach them, show them something they don't know. They are looking for something to cover up their insecurities too. They are just human beings. They are no different. They are no different from the designers I talk to regularly. They are no different from, from the WhatsApp, Telegram communities that I get to talk to. They are no different. Yes, their offices might be a bit more elevated but they are not different. And I felt this overwhelm, overwhelming sense of confidence 
just totally sweep over me. And I felt at home. And we had an amazing time. And I realized they were just people. They were like my sisters that I talked to, my friends, just people. And you know, when I got home and I told my wife, these guys, they're just regular people. And she said, This is what you say every time. And I like, I, I, I wasn't even aware that I always tell her this. So whenever you go somewhere, you always tell me, Well, they are no different from the regular people I talk to, the designers. And you know, it just took me back to one of the very first corporate trainings and speaking engagements I had. And you know, it was just from months of doing my um my YouTube channel then, and someone had been watching, and the person said, I love what you're doing your YouTube channel. Can you come and talk to um, a department in my office? And the first thing too, I felt really small. I'm like, who am I talking to the department in your office? These guys are corporate people. Some of these guys are older than me. And I said, just come and tell them exactly what you're saying on your YouTube channel. Exactly what you're telling these creatives and designers. Just tell them. And I felt very uncomfortable. But the person encouraged me. And I went in for that um, speaking engagement. And, you know, the first day I got there too, these people came in, you know, all corporately dressed. And some of them much older than me, much older. A lot of experience in the civil service. And I had to talk to them. And when, when I got there, when I started talking, they started asking questions. And I'm like, they're asking the same innocent, insecure questions that 20 something year olds ask me. They were advanced in age, but they were still like little children. Like they, and I just realized that everyone deep inside us, no matter how how old we grow or how high we climb in our careers, at our very core, we are little children seeking appreciation, validation, and direction we're all little children no matter how high how lofty the office is as long as it's a human being just a little child seeking appreciation validation and a sense of direction so i spoke to them that day the very first speaking engagement i had corporate speaking engagement and they, they were so thrilled that months later they asked me to come back and talk to them about work ethics in the civil service. And I'm like, I've never worked a day in the civil service before. Why are you asking me? And they're like, well, you talk to us about branding. And we really love that. So now we want you to talk to more people. And you know, for me, it was very humbling. And I realized that every time I go and speak to people, no matter how lofty the office is, it's filled with people who at the very, very core just want to be heard, want to learn, want to be seen, want to be appreciated, want to be told that they're on the right path, want to be reassured. And the reason I'm saying this today is because a lot of times, for a lot of us, we feel very small in our own eyes. We, we underestimate the value we carry and we overestimate other people and their size. We always feel unprepared. But you're more prepared than you think. Now, there's a part of the Bible in Luke where Jesus was telling a story and he said, he was given an instance to his disciples and he said, imagine your friend comes to your door in the middle of the night and knocks your door and tells you, I have some guests that just came to visit me at this very odd hour and I have no food or anything to offer them. Can you give me, lend me some bread from your house? And Jesus said, even if you are in bed and everybody in your house has gone to bed and you've put up the light, the Bible says that because of your shameless audacity, the shameless audacity of your friend to come to your door 
and knock at that time, you will look for a way of sorting him or her out. Because of their shameless audacity. I think those words stuck in my mind. Shameless audacity. What Jesus was saying was that we should have shameless audacity. Shameless audacity. That's audacity that says, mm, yeah, I might be young, but then I think I have something to say to these people that are much older than me. I think they can learn a few things from me. I might be inexperienced, but the little experience I have is something someone would value. Shameless audacity. Then I thought about it and I'm like, who am I? You know, graphic designer, don't have a master's degree, no, barely came out with a tutu in school, um, didn't do very well in primary school. Who am I to talk to these executives when I stand before them? But then I always feel something in me telling me, you are my son. And I've put in you something, no matter how small, that some people don't have. A little piece of puzzle that everybody needs in their lives. No matter how small that puzzle is, without that little piece, the puzzle is incomplete. When you stand before them, Offer them that little bit because they need it. I don't know if you ever had a puzzle before. I've had puzzles over, over the years. And one piece goes missing, no matter how grand every single piece is and put and that is put together. That one piece in the middle of the puzzle or by the edge in the corner will always bug you out. I won't tell someone here that you are that one piece. Forget about how grand the entire puzzle is. Somebody, somebody needs you. That, that your value is that one piece they need that keeps them awake at night, that makes them feel insecure. That should be your shameless audacity. You are not coming with five pieces. You are not coming with four. You are coming with one. But that one is needed. Carry it with all the pride. Because they need it. I'll never forget an experience I had in 2020. I think it was 2020. I think 20, 2019 verse 20, um, slash 2020. I, you know, the work I was doing as a graphic designer was kind of getting overwhelming. And I was beginning to not enjoy graphic design as an activity anymore so i wanted to get someone else to be doing some of the design heavy lifting so i i, I put out a post calling for an intern and uh, my wife helped me to draft out uh, what the requirements would be and it was so well drafted out very nicely drafted out you know my wife is good when it comes to structure so she wrote out all those things that the feel the person would need, what the age, what the expectations are, where they should be based, they should be based in Abuja and stuff. And I put it out there, it was looking so good. And I was thinking, and I waited to just have people flood my email and my DMs. But then, first day, nobody, second day, nobody, third day, nobody, fourth day, first week, nobody, absolutely nobody reached out. And this kind of shocked me. Because I know that I had a lot of designers follow me. And they're always saying, oh, sir, do you have any job? Do you have any job? But then nobody reached out. So I was thinking, are they seeing this thing? Or is there like a shadow ban on my account or stuff like that? I put on my WhatsApp status. Nobody was biting. And I think after like a week and a half, I got a message on WhatsApp from a young man, and he told me his name. His name is Stephen. And I asked him, how long have you been designing? He said, to me just for about a year or so, not too long. And I thought, oh, that's not what was said in, in what was put out, in the requirement. I asked him, how old are you? He said, 19. Ah, 
I'm like, that's just barely making the age of what we want this intent to be. I said, do you know how to use this softwares? Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop. He said, I've just been learning. I'm just learning. Do you have a portfolio? Not really. And I said, where are you based? And this was, what, this was the one that blew me away. He said, I'm based in Lagos. And at this point, I said, Did you, are you sure you read this thing well? Because I, I, we clearly said Abuja. And he said, I read it well, sir. And he said, and he said, I really want to work with you, sir. I've been, I've been following you for years now. And I feel this is my opportunity to learn from you. I know I don't meet up to any of these requirements. But then I feel this is the opportunity for me. And I was blown away by his audacity. And I, at that point in time, you know, he validated me. Telling me he had been following me for years. He was looking up to me. He was a fan. I was his mentor. And just felt like this was his opportunity. He reached out to the human part of me. Not the corporate part. The human. And I felt appreciated. I felt validated. And immediately I considered him strongly. Even though he didn't meet the corporate requirements. He totally met the human requirements. I connected with him. I felt a connection with him. And for the whole of 2020, Stephen and I worked together. And it was an incredible experience. He was highly valuable to me. Highly valuable. I'll never forget working with him. He made 2020 an incredible work experience for me. At a point, I could trust him with my client to work on projects from beginning to the end. And you know, at the end of 2020, when I was about closing down my design outfit, I told him, Stephen, go ahead and do this thing on your own. Set up your thing. Set up your thing. Because I think you're good enough. And he started setting up his thing. And today he's still doing his thing. We still talk. And I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of him. I'm not only proud of his work. I'm proud of his audacity. And you know, months after Stephen has started working with me, some other designers told me, oh, I saw your, your advert for an intern. And I asked them, why, why, didn't you, why didn't you apply? Some people living right here in Abuja. And said, just seemed a little too, seemed a little too out of my width. When you wrote that thing, it just seemed like I didn't have the experience. Seemed like I didn't have the capacity. They were not audacious enough. Some of them that were audacious enough were just too late. They saw it months later. But here was this 19-year-old guy stepping up to the plate and exceeding my expectations. I want to encourage someone today. You've been looking at that job application, that vacancy. And the way they write it, oh, it looks like, man, it's for somebody with 20 years experience. You have only two. Shameless audacity. Shameless audacity. Remember, companies are artificial entities. They're only made up of people at the very core, human beings with blood, insecurities like you. You'll be surprised the people that work in high-level places and you'll be surprised how little they actually know and how relatable they are. They are just like you. I have a friend who lives in South Africa and we talk a lot. Um, he's a very good friend of mine. We went to school, university together, studied architecture together. And, you know, he, he used to lecture in in South Africa. So, you know, he has a BSc, MSc architecture, has um, an MSc in project management, has, you know, 
also has a PhD, is highly, highly educated. Highly educated, highly intelligent. And I was just telling him when we were talking yesterday, I said, you know, you know what? If I were, if someone were to read me your CV, there was a citation written for you. I would feel intimidated by this person that you are reading about. Because I would feel this person is way too intellectual for me to have a conversation with. But here we are, both of us having this conversation. And to me, you're just a human being. Vulnerable, vulnerable, just like I am. Looking to be appreciated, looking to be seen, looking to be heard. Who makes mistakes just like the next person who is unsure. But the CV seems so perfect. But here we are having conversations easily, laughing. Think about that when next you look at an opening for a job. They always seem very tidy. And it seems like you are too untidy. Shameless audacity. Go knocking at that door. Sometimes it's your audacity that opens the door, not your qualifications. My name is Tola T.A. Alabi, and you've been listening to my podcast, Pro Up Masterclass.